We're officially back in the excavating business. Oh, yeah. So why did we buy a mini excavator? When Mrs. W and I uh, moved out here uh, to the new homestead, we bought two additional properties, one commercial and one a residential lot that's uh, next to ours. With the plan of um, developing these, and you know we've talked about in the past, and the potential community center and all these things, right? Well, life is changing rapidly <laughs> as for us as well as probably you guys, and you guys got to be able to pivot and move quickly and react to the changing environment that we're living in. We wanted to get started after we, you know, we've been here since November and we kind of got settled in and we're ready to get started on these projects. And so I started uh, making some calls with local contractors, excavating contractors to get started on a pretty significant amount of uh, prep work, site work, excavating, power, utilities, pipe, all those sorts of things. Started getting, started getting bids coming in and the bids are 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, you know, for things that I can do myself. If you're a new subscriber, you may not know this, but I was an excavating contractor for many years. I've had, this is actually the third Traco excavator that I've bought. I've never had a mini one before, but this is um, my first cat. So we got to looking at the numbers and what we needed to do when it came to road building and culverts and all of these things. And for what we would spend on hiring someone else to do it, we could essentially just about buy an excavator. I went to the cat dealership thinking, well, maybe we can go down there and uh, maybe they have something on the lot that would work for us. I asked him if he had any mini excavators and he laughed at me. There's not a mini excavator, a good one, that's low hours uh, in the, in, on the whole west that I could even find. He told me six months to a year and that's if there, if there weren't any supply problems. And I said, okay, no problem. So I went down the road and talked to my Kubota friends and I thought, well, maybe they have something. He said 12 to 18 months. Uh, he laughed at me as well. Got on Craigslist, found this beautiful little 303 with five hours on it. It's a 2021, uh, really nice gentleman, about three hours from here, uh, bought it to do some work and it kind of fell through and he ended up not doing it. It's been sitting in his garage for the, the whole time under warranty still. So Mrs. W and I went and got a trailer and went and picked it up and got home last night. We drove across two states uh, about one o'clock in the morning in the dark and went to bed. So I'm kind of seeing it for the first time in real daylight and we'll do a walk around here together. And then I'll, I want to explain at the end of the video why we did this and uh, some more reasons, but let, let's do the walk around and um, look at some of the features and uh, check it out together. Take everything I tell you here with a grain of salt. I'll give it to you the best of my abilities. This is a 8,200 8, pound machine. The smallest of the true cat excavators. They make littler ones. They even make some that are designed to work inside of buildings and stuff for commercial. But this is a true cat, meaning that it's USA made with a Caterpillar engine and all USA components. Where the, if you get smaller than this, you get into Chinese made, what I've been told, or overseas. Not quite the same thing. 26 horsepower Caterpillar four-cylinder engine, 8,200 pounds, cab, AC, thumb, extra circuits. I think every option that's available on these pretty much is spec'd out on this machine. What's behind this access panel here? Okay, air filter, condensers. Boy, it's really nicely easy to work on. Got our fuel filters here. Gonna be a dreamed service. <laughs> service. I'm not used to seeing everything on such a minuscule schedule or, or schedule minuscule scale. I guess we can start at the bucket here, work our way back. So I got two buckets. I got a 48 muck and a 12 inch trenching bucket. I'm going to order a 24. I like to work inside of a 24. 12 inch ditch is just a little too narrow. Plus the thumb assembly is wider than that. So it drags on the side of the trench. So it's not really good for anything deeper than maybe a couple feet. A hydraulic thumb, uh, extra circuit right here and a high flow option. So we could run compactors or hammers or, or accessories on here on the quick attaches all ready to go. I <laughs> still can't get over how small everything is. It's got really nice LED lights on it. Good guards here. This is kind of interesting. Now I've never ran a machine like this. It, get, it gives you the ability to work two ways. You can uh, run the stick like a back, like a modern backhoe, meaning that it that the cab stays stationary and it hinges back and forth like a rubber tire machine or you can run it like a traditional excavator. I guess that might be kind of nice in confined spaces. Oh 
Alright, I don't know exactly how this works. Let's, I think it's somewhere in here. Okay, unlock wedge. Wedge. Look at that. How many years did I push pins? <laughs> Lock wedge in the rear. Beepers off. You can test it by putting some weight on the teeth here. You don't want that bucket falling off, especially if you have men you're working with in the ditch. And voila. Don't even have to get out of the cab. <laughs> that's pretty neat. In the front of the machine is the four-way blade, so that's up and down and then angles, which is really nice if you're digging a trench and you need to backfill, you can angle that and just go along the trench and crawl and it rolls all the dirt back in. Nice big guards over everything. You know, Caterpillar's been doing this for a while. It, it appears they have a thing or two figured out. The flatbed trailer that I have is not heavy enough for that machine and I'm going to replace it with this one. I'm going to end up selling that. Uh, this is a 14-foot iron bowl dump trailer that's uh, rated for 14,000 GBW. So with the excavator at 8,200, it comes in just about perfect. This is designed for track vehicles. It's got big I-beams, so you don't have to worry about the bed buckling. And it fits close enough to the truck's GBW. I was really impressed with the truck. I've got that 7.3, the new 7.3 Godzilla engine in there, and I was curious to see how it would do this at the very maximum of its GVW and some. We came up out of a, a hole out of a canyon, about two mile stretch of a six, five to six percent grade, and it just hauled up it, no problem. Even going down, I rarely even touch the brakes. It's got a, the truck engine braking is so good, we just crawled down off of there up in that six percent grade with all of that weight pushing us and I, no brake problems, didn't even hardly touch them. It was really, really a nice deal. The dump trailer, several reasons for that. Uh, to, we can move material around now. We can move, you know, might be able to get a couple yards of gravel in here or where we're cutting sod and stuff. I can use it for my, like a dump truck. When I call contractors right now trying to get dump trucks or anyone to come out, no one will. They just say, no, we're booked out for weeks and weeks. So this gives us the ability to move the machine around without relying upon anyone. We can go to the other properties or anyone else that might you know, need work done. I told Jack this summer, he's been looking for a job. So once you go hang a shingle out, <laughs> you can maybe pick up some small jobs around here. But, uh, there's so, so many options. And in, for me, I think that the, the more, most important thing that, that tipped the scales on this for me was just what's happening with inflation and the uncertainty of the future. You know, I was looking at kind of looking at finances with Mrs. W and I think we kind of estimated that we've lost about 13% of our savings since the new administration president, president's been elected from inflation alone. We're just watching, just like you guys, just watching your savings just go down and down and be worth less and less and less. This I think is kind of a hedge against that. If it's taken care of or the excavator taken care of and and not beat up, you know, it really is money in the bank. And as hard as they are to find, it very well is likely you could use it for a year and, and sell it for about what you paid for it. So as far as just an investment or a place, a safe place to put your money, I'm not comfortable with stock market. I'm not comfortable with what's going on. I think it's, it's just too volatile and I just don't understand it. I'm not really sophisticated enough to know what's going on. And there's smarter guys than me that are out there and some of them might be wanting to take, well, they do take advantage of guys. So having local property that you can stand on, that you can own, uh, hard goods, equipment, things like that, are really a smart hedge, I think, against problems in the future. And YouTube is a, well, it's a, it's a fickle mistress, right? We could wake up at any time and, and be um, off or gone, our channel deleted. Um, and I don't like that. That's uncomfortable. So to have something a guy could fall back on, if Jack and I needed to in hard times, we could take the machine and the dump trailer and we could provide for our family. You know, we could put food, we could put food in the mouths of my kids with that. So I feel better about that to have some options. Will I keep it forever? Uh, I don't know, um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I just do my work and get everything done and the developing that we'd like to do and then uh, let it move on to the next guy, but uh, time will tell. 
it's hard to plan for the future. Uh, things are in flux right now. But one thing I want to leave with you, be sure that you um, get stocked up on those uh, things that are essential. Have a little extra food, have a little extra supplies. I remember what happened last year. We're coming into a winter and there's going to be food shortages. Gas is getting expensive. Um, it's hard to know what to do and, and where to go, but um, this is where we're going. Anyway, thanks for watching. Next video, we're going to get over to the greenhouse. Let's see how that's going and then we'll close. Today we're starting on assembling the greenhouse. Jariah just stripped the forms and it's got everything laid out. We're going to start building the frame up. I guess we'll build the whole frame and then we'll put the glass in. So I'm going to go edit this video for you guys. We'll come back out, get going on that. And uh, next time, We'll have uh, maybe some greenhouse assembly. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers. We'll see you all on the next video.